Hey everyone! So today I'm going to be trying something a little different. I am going to be sharing with you guys a channeled message that I received about five days now. And this centered around past lives and learning how to heal past lives in the present working with your multi-galactic self. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about past lives because they can be a crucial part like on your healing journey and ways you can really start working with your own, um, the galactic side of yourself to assist in deeper and deeper healings. Because oftentimes, you know, when we have a lot of past life memories, um, they can influence a lot of our behaviors that we're currently experiencing. And some people may just not even be aware of the patterns that they're in have started from a past life. And this is not to solely put like all blame in past lives, but you could be surprised about how much of um, your life experiences could be rooted in different incarnations that you've lived through and how they're keeping you in particular patterns in your present current experience. Okay, so if you're somebody that's aware of past lives, you already know that um, a soul has already been through different incarnations before we get to this present experience. And it's going to vary for each soul because some of us are younger souls, some of us are well-experienced souls. So we can have a different amount of previous incarnations. And, you know, oftentimes our past life memories do lay dormant until we go through particular experiences that activate a dormant memory or we're using some kind of healing modality, maybe past life regression or something else to help bring those past life memories to the forefront. And I know some people don't agree with like tapping with past, tapping into past lives. Like a lot of people may hold the belief like, oh, the past life is just a past life. Just focus on the present life. But within my experience, I'm, I started to realize that there were a lot of incarnations that were influencing my present reality. And it was only through going through them and healing those memories, you can start to create some kind of balance and integration within your being, you know, coming back into wholeness with all these different aspects of yourself. And a lot of times, many of our past life memories are stored within our body, and they're often brought up for processing and releasing when we are truly ready to face the divine truths about our soul. And that parts can be a little heavy sometimes because sometimes we may not want to see um, some of our past life incarnations or even be open to the idea that we lived in different planetary bodies but all of these are revelations you start to have awareness with especially if you start to work with your multi-galactic self so when you start to go through these past life memories, um, oftentimes they're used as a catalyst for divine um, initiation. And this can help you reach deeper and deeper levels of healing, which is something that I personally have started to experience. So usually souls that incarnate together are often known as your family. And within our family, we have major similar lessons and things that we incarnate together to learn. But it really depends on the soul, the amount of time it's going to take for them to learn a particular lesson. One soul can choose to learn a lesson within, you know, um, days, or you can take an entire lifetime just to learn one lesson. And it really depends on the age of the soul. Like, you can be a younger soul or you can be a, an older soul. So... It may not seem like you're going through similar lessons within your family structure, but oftentimes you are. And under each lesson, you know, every soul is essentially remembering universal divine truths, which is unconditional love, compassion, and acceptance. But how you choose to learn it is really dependent on your own past patterns. So it could be through intense suffering and hardships or through love. Um, usually a lot of our souls pick tougher scenarios to learn a lesson just because of repeated programs, but as we collectively choose to remember these divine truths, we don't have to always learn through such tough lessons. We can choose to consciously learn through love for every experience and, you know, learning a lesson can only take a day as opposed to multiple lifetimes or just even years and years and years of the same situations being played out. And usually past life insight is what guides our soul expression to understanding these divine truths. 
um, as we gain more awareness about ourselves. So it's really essential to understand like how our past can influence the present because this is really what is cultivating our soul expression and helping us merge more and more to that that divinity which is like our cosmic divine self. So when we talk about our divine multi-galactic self, which can also be looked at as our cosmic self, it allows us to navigate these divine truths that are written within our unique soul signature and it can bring about greater expansion along your journey. But before we talk about that in depth, we have to look at these fear beliefs that have been projected into our reality, which has been causing us slow soul growth and just karmic loops and patterns that are keeping our lives in similar scenarios. So a lot of time, fear projections are embodied through space-time realities that are being played out simultaneously on parallel timelines. And a fear is usually just a projection a person has to understand. When we start to remove these fear projections from our reality, we no longer have the fear. And this is something that you'll start to really realize when you start working with your cosmic self. So we delete these fear programs. Um, it's really a crucial part in how we neutralize past life memories and allowing the soul to reach greater levels of expansion. Because as most of you know, like a lot of the suffering in this planet is due to fear-based consciousness. We see that so much nowadays and what's been happening currently with the world. And um, a lot of these programs is what's keeping us in these similar loops. And they're just keep on repeating over and over. And with that being said, there are certain steps that we can utilize to assist us towards healing our past lives for good so we are living more in the present moment, the now moment, and not letting all these fear programs influence our current reality. And I wanted to just share with you guys some of those steps. Maybe this will resonate with you and um, it will help allow you to see like, you know, there are ways to start healing these past life um, programs that could be running while you start to embrace more of your multi-galactic self. So the first one I wanna talk about is just being okay with facing the divine truth of your soul. You know, oftentimes we can magnetize past experiences and traumas into something larger than it really is. Um, I know I'm guilty of doing that. I know several others will probably agree, which, and doing this just keeps us really halted in fear and we are constantly projecting suffering and distortions of love within our personal experiences. And oftentimes when we're able to face all of our fears, our multi-galactic self can, can help us, like they can step in and assist us in deleting fear programs that originated from past lives and complete the unification of the soul into oneness. This is often the hardest step for most when you learn that you really have created a lot of your own suffering. And although most of our experiences are self-created, they can also be influenced by past life programs. Um, in some cases, entities, projections, and emotional scenarios that causes a person to get comfortable with familiar outcomes. So when we work with our multi-galactic self, and this is also I am talking about ET contact in a way, I'll go into detail in another video, um, this could really be the missing piece of many of our puzzles. So the second step I want to share with you guys is also just allowing for familiar circumstances to assist us towards changes that we need to make in our lives in order for our soul journey to harmonize towards different experiences. So a soul has to also agree to make necessary changes within their lives to better their growth and expansion within this earthly existence. So you kind of just, you have to be willing to make changes in your life. When when some of your patterns and your habits are brought to your attention, you know, you do also have to do your part. You're the main character within your experience, so you have to do what it takes to make the changes within your life. And when you're not motivated or you have that lack of involvement within your own life's or your own soul's journey, this will not allow for constant assistance from higher aspects of yourself. So the only thing that can assist others in changing is seeing others that have walked along the beaded path if you are a way shower. And I know a lot of you that stumble across this video are definitely way showers way showers or you're a light leader so this is a, a crucial component of that position you know you have to be willing to walk the talk and talk the walk 
And we all know like way short, we set the template for the collective. So your choices really do matter more than you think. And one different change takes the course of your experience to a brand new level. Although change is hard, it is necessary in order for healing to occur. And remember that your divinity can coexist with others who are on the same wavelength as yourself. And you know, sometimes the changes that we have to make in our lives really do set us apart from the pack. And that may include like adding or removing certain foods from your diet, time management, meditation, or just changing maladaptive behavior, behavior patterns and habits that really aren't serving you or allowing you to connect to your divine channel. Because you do have to maintain that clear channel connectivity to your divinity as much as you possibly can. So that can be a big thing for a lot of people and just really wanting to change their life, like changing those habits or just things that come up for you personally in order to connect, connect more and more and more to your divine nature. And then the third step I want to talk about is utilizing particular elements to cultivate a given outcome that involves the releasing of past life memories. So there's two herbs that I've personally been working with and one of the herb is called valerian root. And valerian root is a powerful herb that guides the multi-galactic aspect of yourself to embedded memories that are in prominent areas within the body and helps them to release. So for females, past life memories are usually centered around the cervix and the vagina, and for men it's in the scrotum area. So this herb will help like bring out some of those memories that need to be transmuted. And then another herb is called Burberry or Berberine. I'm gonna flash the names on the screen. And these assist with cultivating an emotional neutralizing effect during the releasing process that happens with your multigalactic self. And our multigalactic aspects initiate the process through emotionally charged words, symbols, music, movies, and projections to stimulate the emotional circuits um, within our body to allow for quick release. So oftentimes you'll be guided towards different things that can help you remember some of these memories that so they can be brought to the forefront and be deleted. And many of these changes can take place rather quickly, like within a few hours, but you do have to have self-belief during the process as it's done through intuition and telepathic communication. And um, like for me, I had, I went through a lot of different memories when I started taking these herbs and even one of the herbs itself, Valerian, was the name of a spaceship that I used to, um, I guess, work with and memories from that lifetime started to come up, which is very, very interesting for me. So you always have to remember that you are assisting with your transformative work and don't leave everything up to the multi-galactic aspect of yourself. Even though you're going to start to experience a lot of interesting things, you know, you still have to assist in the process <laughs> and uh, to allow these memories and all these things to transmute effectively. And remember that your current aspect of yourself is always in the driver's seat making the decision, so don't try to give your power away or anything like that. And sometimes the memories come and go through the process, but remember that everything is coming up to be cleared. So it can feel a little bit more intense emotionally or just through the memories, but know that it's part of the process and it really is being released. And this is really, can be difficult at times because this is really the part where you are facing yourself and you have to kind of re-experience things in a way before you can fully transmute that and work towards being more unified within your being. So definitely don't fear the process. These memories are far less dramatic than we make it out to be or what we choose to believe. And the fourth step I wanna talk about is remembering that everything is a part of you. This step can really slow some people down from completing the purification process towards wholeness or unification. And these aspects that have been fragmented are being restored and cultivated through cellular repair and other energy mending processes. 
So as you work with your multi-galactic self, this process will be downloaded to you for everyday energy hygiene. And people usually remember to perform these hygiene techniques um, upon sunrise and sunset of every day. And they can range from breathing sequences, affirmations, poses, and intentions to stay in order to stimulate higher states of awareness that will allow for different divine aspects to be embodied. And this process is generally called spiritual emergence or initiation, which often leads people into the hospital if it gets too intense or if poor self-care is being practiced. And you know, this is something that recently happened to me. I'll probably talk about it in another video um, when I feel more ready to share that, but that's something that I just recently kind of, well, I've been going through, almost done. And the fifth and final step I want to talk about is cultivating systems that allows the individual to access different abilities that further one's advancement into higher states of awareness through the process called remembrance. And some other tools that cultivate galactic understanding can involve certain animals like lizards that imprint new codes throughout the ground for body recognition. And essentially these abilities are not new, we're just pretty much remembering who we truly are. And this assistance towards understanding the divine truth about your abilities will be made as your activation takes place and continues to unfold. So if you are somebody that is ready to activate or start working with the divine aspect of yourself to assist in your purification process, um, I do have a little bit of an affirmation that I received to assist with that. So one thing you can do is definitely get into a meditative space, a quiet area, and allow yourself to surrender um, to this process, you know, and just set the intention for your multi-galactic self to guide you. And for example, something you can say is, I allow my divine multi-galactic self to come forth and assist me in purification of my past lives and any fear programs and projections that aren't in alignment with divine love. And so it is. And that's pretty much all you have to say. You know, as long as you're open to this process, you'll start to be guided towards particular um, scenarios or things that you need, kind of like a synchronistic type of thing, and um, allow the process to continue to unravel. So that's all I want to share with you guys today. I hope you guys are doing well. If you have any questions or some parts of this is not super clear to you yet, feel free to leave a question or um, a comment down below. I'll be glad to answer it. You know, this is my first time kind of channeling something, so I'm still getting my feet into it. And I'll definitely appreciate any feedback you guys have. And I do thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.